Hi guys, welcome back. Fred here from AF Math and Engineering. We're gonna go uh, do a quick theoretical video for you here to best explain or try to explain or help you get the uh, the concept of what are known as the failure modes of reinforced concrete flexural members, okay? So uh, we did a video before where we uh, we were given the information that the beam was properly reinforced and as a result we realized that the beam was in a steel controlled failure mode and that the steel was going to fail before the concrete failed. And we talked about how a designer wants that kind of mode to occur, but there are other types of modes and uh, these modes are extremely important in understanding exactly how to proceed with the question. So um, this is a good video to start if you're looking at some of the other videos that we've done and you're not sure uh, or in this course. This is a, probably one of the trickier parts of the course. So uh, let's take a look at what we have here. Okay, we have a beam up here. And as you can see, the beam is loaded with two point loads. It's just a, uh, we have a reinforcement of steel, tension steel on the bottom of the beam. All right. And the beam is undergoing some sort of deflection, okay, here of delta. And we take a cross section in the center, okay? So we're taking a cross section in the center of the beam there. And when we take a look at the center, we have three different scenarios, as you can see, and different beams of different reinforcements, okay? So the forces are the same, but the reinforcements are different, and I'm going to show you the difference between all of them. Okay, and then after we're going to go take a look at our force deflection curve up here, and that'll help reinforce what we're learning. So in beam A, we have two 25M bars, okay, and um, where they're, we're subjected to a load, it doesn't matter, but what, what we're given here is we're given the strain diagram. Okay, so what you'll notice in, uh, in all three of these conditions is E, C max, the, the maximum strain, the compressive strain at the top of the beam is always equal to 0 0.0035, okay? So that's something to note. And uh, in beam A, we have what's called steel controlled failure or what's also known as properly reinforced. Okay, so this is what, essentially this is the mode in which a designer is looking to design in, okay? And I'm gonna use red to draw this on the uh, force deflection diagram, but a steel controlled beam is going to look like this, okay? So we have a, an elastic portion of our deflection force curve, okay? Where uh, as deformation happens, we're not gonna have any uh, inelastic deformation. Okay, and then what's going to happen is we're going to have a flattening out of the curve, meaning that we have um, a, a very large deflection with very little force added. And what this is good for here, okay, and then we have our ultimate point of failure, which is over here. Okay, so this is beam A. So uh, what this is good for is because we have this very long period of deflection, okay, in this area when we've designed a beam, Okay, this means that the occupants of a building will be able to see this deflection, they'll be able to get out. Okay, so we're not going to have a sudden failure of the beam. We're going to have a very large deflection, the beam is going to buckle, it's going to look wrong, people are going to run out of the building. This is the ideal scenario for design. Okay, and uh, what we have here, okay, is we, we can see that there's a very large tensional strain. Okay, so this is, we'll call this tension here, and this is compression. Okay, we have a very large tensional strain. And, and this extends all the way up to here. So our depth of our compression block is quite low, actually. Very small, okay? So we have a very small portion of the beam that is under uh, compression. And that is not best if we're looking to maximize the, the load that this beam can carry, right? Because we want more of the beam, more of the concrete in compression because concrete is good in compression and not good in tension, which is all down here. Okay, but what this does afford us is it allows us a more ductile behavior. Okay, and you'll see what that means in the uh, in the next one. Okay, so here what we have is we have a what we like to call a con concrete controlled failure. Okay, so a concrete controlled failure. And sorry, let me go ahead and I'll just uh, make some assumptions here. Okay, so we the the yield strain in this in the reinforcing steel. Okay, is greater than the yield strain of the steel. Okay, that's one assumption that we make whenever we have a steel controlled or properly reinforced beam. Okay, and we also have that EC max is equal to 0 0.0035. Okay, and that's a constant. Perfect. Okay, so those are the assumptions that we're making. Also, uh, the stress in the steel is equal to the yield stress. Okay, these are three assumptions that we need to make in this condition. So beam two is concrete controlled failure. I'm going to do this one in green for you. Okay, and what concrete controlled failure means, okay, is that we have a abundance of steel, 
so that the strain in the steel has not exceeded the yield strain. Okay, so what this means is the concrete is most likely going to fail under this loading before the steel reaches, reaches its yielding point. And if we remember from studying concrete, and I'm going to do this one in, in green, okay, is that concrete is a very brittle material, so it's going to fail very quickly. So what this beam will be able to hold more load, okay? But what the, the, the behavior that we're going to see is we're going to see a sudden drop off and a sudden failure, okay, beam B. And so it's going to actually be able to hold more load, withstand more load, because we have more of the beam in, in compression, okay? So we're utilizing more of that compressive strength of the concrete, okay? But at the same time, as we utilize more compressive strength of the concrete, what's going to happen is we're going to have a more brittle failure. So as more, we're using more concrete, we're going to have a quicker, less, uh, a very sudden failure of our design. And uh, whenever you're designing beams, you're going to have to make sure that, you know, if you're, uh, if you're concrete controlled or if you're the next one, you have to be very careful with your design. Because um, if something goes wrong, if, the, if it's overloaded, it's just going to fail and no one will be able to get out in time. So the third one we have is what's called our balance condition. The balance condition is actually just another form of concrete controlled failure. Okay, because it is also a rather brittle failure. And uh, the concrete controlled failure, we have ES, sorry, is less than EY. Okay, the stress and the strain in the steel are both less than the yield stress and the yield strain of the steel. The E max is also equal to 0 0.0035. Now, finally, we have our balance condition. And our balance condition, okay, we have that the strain in the steel is equal to the yield strain in the steel. Okay, so what happens in this condition, so we have ES is equal to e epsilon Y, okay, and we have SF, FS is equal to FY. Very good. Okay, so the, uh, the stress in the steel is equal to the yield stress. This tensile strain in the steel is equal to the yield strain. And we have EC max is equal to 0 0.0035, okay? And what this is going to yield is us is a condition in which both the steel and the, uh, the concrete fail at the same time, okay? So when uh, the beam is, is elastic until its failure, okay? So what this means is, and I'm just going to draw this one in black, is it's going to hold a little bit less, okay, than uh, beam B, not much less. And uh, it will exhibit its elastic failure all the way until failure, okay? So one will not fail before the other, but it's also a brittle failure. So beam A is usually the uh, type of design that we use uh, when designing uh, concrete structures because it's safer even though it holds less. So uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I hope that helped kind of understand or, you know, kind of cement your knowledge a little bit in the um, in this subject. And this, I think that understanding these concepts here will really help to uh, get you a good grade in this course. Thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe.